In this video, we're modeling a range of different cargoes for your freight car. Everything from fruit to empty crates and steel rolls. Hello, welcome to a video tutorial which kicks off this new year 2022. And as promised uh, in the uh, layout tour video, we're gonna spend this video making cargoes for your freight cars. Like this, this is uh, seed sacks for uh, potato sacks, <laughs> whatever you want them to, to contain. And you know, making those own cargoes, your customized cargoes, allows you to you know, have the cargo which matches your prototype. So for instance, here I have a, a lumber uh, theme, which, uh, you know, so I, I load uh, lumber up on the lo lumber loading station, which is transported down to the, the sawmill and the sawmill produces planks. So from the sawmill, I have stacks of plank, which goes up to the, the, the factory where they make uh, pallets, uh, crates and uh, also some parts for furniture. So that's kind of my scenario. If you're running steel, then you probably have long <laughs> iron or steel trains uh, going to the smelter, which uh, are, are producing the steel, which then are, are rolled onto, cold rolled into coils and transported uh, maybe in open gondolas to, you know, some car manufacturer or cabinet manufacturer who uses that kind of, of product. And I'll, to to load and, and switch cargo, I think that really adds an extra dimension to to the freight operation. So when the cargo arrives to, to the destination, you offload the car. And then, you know, I think it's important that the cargo also looks good when it is offloaded on destination because you don't want a <laughs> plastic spacer, just a cover of something. You want the cargo to look genuine also uh, offloaded. So, so that's something also desire. And most often if you, if you go to the shop and, and buy such cargoes, or if you buy them over the internet, they're kind of expensive. So there's also a cost factor in, in making your own cargo. And we're gonna make uh, cargoes here from everything from <laughs> toilet paper to clay and also 3D print. Uh, if you haven't yet got a 3D printer, uh, you know, <laughs> for me this opened up a, a, a world of possibilities. Uh, and I, I think honestly it's uh, probably the, the biggest uh, breakthrough in the hobby since uh, the, the trains became digital. So uh, if you haven't got a 3D printer yet, check out uh, Anycubic's deal for the Mono 4K. It's an excellent uh, 3D printer which you, which give you give you a, a jump start into to that world as well. Enough talk. Let's get started on the cargo. We're uh, kicking off this uh, cargo marathon by making a tarpaulin wrapped cargo. I've done uh, numerous variants of this uh, and found that uh, the best looking cargos in tarpaulin is uh, rectangular shaped. So I typically make a base here from styrofoam. The advantage with styrofoam, besides that it's very easy to work with, is that it's also easy to engrave some surface pattern into it. And these patterns will be shown through the tarpaulin once we're done. I'm uh, using a really stiff brush, which I'm stippling into the surface of this uh, styrofoam to kind of imitate that something is lying here in crates or uh, frames, something like this. So, yeah. When you're happy with the surface of your styrofoam block, it's time to get started on the wrapping. I'm using bathroom tissue for this and I soak it into white glue, that's wood glue. Elmer Construction or Ponal in Germany, uh, mixed with water. You can optionally also add paint at this stage to get a a color tint on your bathroom tissue. I'm choosing black gray here because it matches the color which is typically on these uh, tarpaulins in Sweden. And here's the uh, paper piece. Uh, this is uh, bathroom tissue which is a bit thicker than toilet paper 
I cut a piece which uh, covers the top and the sides of this block and I first apply some glue so the paper sticks in place so we can position it properly first like that yeah and then we can start uh, soaking it with uh, with this uh, water glue mix and uh, this uh, glue mix is uh, two parts uh, glue and one part water so it's a kind of thick glue mix there will be um, patterns in the papers like this uh, they are very easy to remove with additional uh, water glue mix and just some stippling with uh, with a soft brush already at this point you can see the typical wrinkling and uh, appearance of tarpaulin wrapped cargo leave this to dry now for a few hours then we're gonna paint it and as you might know most acrylic paints are matte and the tarpaulin is typically at least satin or even glossy so what I do I mix gloss varnish into the acrylic paint and then I cover the entire tarpaulin part with this paint mix then it's time for the wrapping or the straps i cut them from a gray paper using a steel scale and a razor blade the straps are fixed on the back side using the same type of wood glue we used to soak the tarpaulin if you like you can uh, enhance the appearance even further by adding strips of balsa underneath this block uh, it will kind of look like that uh, the cargo is possible to handle with a forklift for instance but it also enhances the appearance when the cargo is offloaded wherever it's offloaded at your layout i glue the balsa pieces in place using the same type of wood glue as we've been using for all of the stuff in this build all right so here's our tarpaulin wrapped cargo now we're gonna model a really nice looking cargo i don't know if you're uh, running uh, your trains countryside then you might be interested in crates of fruit this uh, is a 3d print item which is available from model railroad 3d put a link up in the upper right hand corner to the web shop at uh, uh, CG Trader where you can find this it's uh, both this type of uh, cargo for an entire car but it's also uh, individual fruit crates both filled and empty so uh, we just print them out and then cure them in the anycubic wash and cure for a few minutes and after that they're ready to be painted to simplify paint i assemble them on a piece of it's a wooden stick with a double sided adhesive on one side so i leave a bit of clearance in between here so i can spray also the sides of these blocks of crate to create this uh, wooden imitation i mix uh, flat yellow with white and uh, the proportions between these two is i uh, use uh, one part yellow and two part white lastly i add one drop of raw umber brown into this mix now i'm applying this uh, paint using a uh, airbrush but uh, it uh, works just as well to apply it using a flat wide soft brush instead but remember to cover also the fruit with this paint because it's a good foundation for the later painting we will do now pour the remaining part of the paint into a tray add additional brown into this mix stir or mix with a brush until you get a kind of milk chocolate uh, brown color so we're arriving to that here and i'm adding just one drop of black to kind of give this uh, chocolate um, color a more well 
muddy tone, I would say. And transfer some of uh, that paint into uh, another tray. And in there, we're adding about half water. So now we got 50-50 of water and paint mix. So I'm painting the sides of the crate stacks here with this uh, paint mix using a flat, wide, soft brush. This uh, wash will uh, end up in between the crates and give uh, contrast and separate the crates, make them actually look like crates and not plastic blocks. Use a smaller brush for the top. Once dry, it will look like this. Now it's time to paint the fruit inside. I'm going for red apples, so I select the acrylic red paint for that. However, it needs to be blended or mixed with yellow to look natural and also thinned with water and alcohol. So in this third bin with the transparent liquid, it's nine part water and one part alcohol. Then you see I make a mix of that uh, red and yellow and the idea here is not to paint uh, every apple individually because that will take an eternity now in fact these um, 3d print models are made so you just drop in the paint and it will kind of stay inside the crate and then you can uh, if you like add uh, extra reddish paint on top of the apples to enhance the look how about if we combine that uh, you know, tarpaulin wrapped cargo with a piece of this uh, fruit? I think it will have a really nice appearance. I saw something similar from uh, manufacturer Architect some year ago. They had a cargo for um, a truck. So we're going for that look. So again, I'm wrapping uh, this... Uh, bathroom uh, tissue around this uh, block of styrofoam and then I fold back this paper kind of like this so it looks like someone folded it away I soak it with the water glue mix like this and then again I mix uh, high gloss varnish with the black green acrylic paint and I add this uh, quite richly on top of that uh, piece of paper Then in the region of the fruit, you have to paint with the level of precision here. Avoid painting on the fruit surface. Yeah. Like that. And with that done, it's just to add the straps and also some extra fruit boxes on the top and sides. And of course, yeah, this is uh, maybe not a uh, kind of prototypic um, transport, but when you offload the goods in the, like in this, the harbor, it will look very nice to have it like this. And when it passes along the line, it looks very nice as well. So it's a trade off there between reality and appearance. Here I painted some avocados and some uh, oranges as well. So you see, you can paint any fruit you like with this kit. For the return fright, there are also empty boxes included in this uh, set of fruit cargo. So we just peel them off the support, glue it together and then paint it using the same routine as we used for the fruit boxes and then add some straps around those uh, piles of empty boxes and off go them back to the plantation or wherever the fruit came from originally. 
Alright, next uh, cargo up is uh, seed or potato sacks. We're gonna make those from clay. I'm using this uh, Das Pronto clay, which is a special type of clay which uh, hardens in room temperature. Other types of clay needs to be run in the oven at high temperatures to, to harden. So, what you might need to do when you remove a piece of this from the package is to add more water to it. This prevents it from uh, cracking when you work on it, but it also gets softer. So first I work it into a worm and then I flatten it with my hands like this. Then I take uh, an oven paper, one of those you have on the... when you bake things in the oven and I have a roller pin as well. So I roll this uh, flat to a thickness of uh, three millimeters, which equals to one sixteenth inch. And I cut it in slices to whatever size of uh, sack you want to have. I go for uh, five millimeter uh, wide strips here. And then I peel these strips off and I put them on a nylon cloth. This is a type of nylon cloth you use to build kites. Yeah, so just put the nylon around and then push so the clay strip gets that nylon texture. And then I use a blunt knife to separate the bags from each other inside this uh, piece of nylon cloth. When you fold the cloth away you can see that now you have that surface texture on the clay as well. So here are our bags. Now leave these to dry overnight and uh, then you can peel them away from each other and uh, then they will look something like this. I take uh, like all of them and shake them in a in my hand or something to just get some of the low, loose fragments away then they will look better. Then you also need a kind of foundation to glue them on. For this I use my favorite material which is styrofoam but you can also use a piece of balsa or even a cardboard sheet. It's uh, not uh, very critical at all. I glue them in place using Elmer Construction, which is the PVA glue, the wood glue. And then I just put them in place, you know, kind of uh, organized, but not entirely. So, like this. And uh, once the glue has dried, I paint them first in a kind of light brown color. Now, unfortunately, this uh, paint here looks uh, kind of gray. And that means that I've been using too much black in the paint mix. So, next uh, is a wash. And this uh, wash will enhance the contour of uh, between the sacks, but also the texture, the surface texture of each individual bag. This... Uh, wash is more black than the previous paint mix. Then all we need to do now is to leave this to dry. If you like you can apply an additional layer of paint by dry brushing. So a light brown color. Again I think I've used too much black in this paint mix here. So it looks kind of more like stones and again that means that I've been using too much black in the paint mix here there should be a half half a drop in the brown color all right so let's uh, load this into a car and it looks like this and again the advantage with this type of, of uh, cargo is that it can be offloaded at destination and uh, kept there and then the cars can go back empty to the original location. 
Next is a really classic train cargo. This is uh, coils of uh, coal roll steel on different type of stands. Uh, these uh, coils uh, are manufactured in widths up to 1500 millimeters. And there is a manufacturer almost in every country. Here in Sweden we have SSAB. Uh, in Germany you have Thyssenkrupp. In uh, USA you have for instance uh, Advanced Steel Company. But there are a lot of them out there. So this type of cargo is found on most uh, railways, railroads around the world. These type of coils are typically transported using special rail cars which are unique uh, I would say for most countries. Now, however they are also transported in gondolas so we're gonna make uh, stands for both uh, gondolas and for uh, flatbed cars which are used in the UK. So what we're doing now we're uh, post curing the plastic parts which we have 3D printed using the drawings from the drawing package of uh, steel cargo. This is also a drawing package from Model Railroad 3D. So what I'm doing here I'm painting the stands in uh, typical corrosion red color. This is uh, most often what they look like when found outside and uh, yeah, you can add some marking on the outside of the cold roll steel i painted this in in corrosion red what you also can do to improve appearance is to add a pastel chalk powder in a dark brown or reddish tone application is made using a makeup sponge like this you see here it uh, fits nicely onto that uh, stand like with the tarpaulin wrapped cargo we're gonna also add straps they are added in the same way i cut uh, strips of uh, paper here it's a black paper and uh, just glue it in place if you like you can have the coils also in metal color and the easiest way to do that is to use a spray can this one's from tamaya and it has the aluminum paint and with straps it looks like this you know but if i was the ceo of Tusenkrupp, i would command that all of the the stands the fixtures for these should be painted in yellow paint instead because they look so much better and if you do you can add some brown dry brush on top of that uh, yellow paint to look it make it look worn like this ah huh? super nice and here they are loaded onto a flatbed car now they are typically not transported uh, at least not in the us on flatbeds then it's uh, more common to see them uh, loaded onto gondolas and one of the more common car on european layouts is the elu type gondola which is a low priced car so everyone has one so then you can have a make a print out these uh, brackets if you don't want to print it out you can make it from straws and pieces of balsa as well just uh, drop it into your gondola there and then take your coal roll steel with wrapping and drop that in as well and you have a very nice uh, kind of prototypic uh, transport of uh, coiled steel here the cost to 3d print and paint these is uh, one tenth of the cost if you buy it in the shop ready-made another classic cargo for rail transport is stacks of i-beams these are printed out like this with the, the wooden supports below and uh, they are also very easy to uh, paint you can either paint them with a flat wide uh, paintbrush or like i'm doing here with airbrush and uh, it's uh, nothing uh, fancy it's just a corrosion type paint and if you like when the paint has dried you can apply also uh, some uh, grinded pastel chalk powder 
in some brown tone just to add the appearance of corrosion like this. I typically also add some paint onto these uh, wooden beams just to highlight them a bit. Add details with the white pen item or batch number then it's just to load them onto your favorite uh, gondola or flatbed car you can of course also add straps to these if you like all right so <laughs> everything from fresh fruit to cold rolled steel in 20 minutes now actually it's uh, you know you can model a lot of different uh, cargos uh, quite easy and uh, you reduce the cost and you can also customize the cargo so it, it suits your needs on your layout so there are many benefits of, of doing this uh, if you haven't got this 3d printer yet uh, you find the link to Anycubic Mono 4K in the video description below. Uh, there you also find the, the link to the drawing packages I've been using in this video to, to create uh, some of the cargoes. Uh, if you have questions around the materials or methods used, please post them in the comment field below the video and I'll try to respond to that as soon as possible. If you want to support the channel, uh, you know, think of this as a magazine subscription, uh, get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from, you know, like one, two dollars per month, or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, do that and enable that little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya.